Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and welcome to part eight of my series, What Gear Is My Gear, where I talk about audio gear that I have chosen to keep around either for personal listening enjoyment or to use as reference pieces for review work. And a reminder here at the top of this video, as I do with all videos in this series, to say that those two categories of personal music, uh, personal music listening enjoyment and uh, review reference gear, those two categories very often overlap and are one and the same. In today's video, we are going to look at the Massdrop Plus Sennheiser HD6XX. This is an open back dynamic driver headphone that is usually available for around 250 US dollars anymore. And I will explain why I say around that price here uh, later on in the video. So we're gonna look at this one today. This is a piece that I have owned for quite some time. It was one of the earlier headphones that I picked up in my audio journey. And uh, it's been around for a while. I have reviewed it in the past. It is one of the review videos that I launched this channel with way back in the day. So it will look and sound um, a little less professional than even this does uh, if you watch that. But I will put that link down in the description below. So let's go ahead and do shameless self-promotion and then we'll come back and talk about why I have chosen to keep the HD6XX around. Hi, I'm Wave Theory's Human Companion, and he wants you to know that your support of this YouTube channel helps keep the reviews coming. If you enjoy Wave Theory's honest, thorough style, then make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the links in the description below to sign up for the Patreon or send him a tip through PayPal. All right, enjoy the musings. Let's come back to that pricing real quick and also talk a little bit briefly about what the HD6XX is and uh, why it exists. Okay, so I mentioned there in the little intro segment that this is available for around 250 US dollars anymore. So this is available at drop.com. It is a collaboration between Sennheiser and what was at the time Mass Drop. And then Mass Drop went on a weight loss program, dropped some mass, and they are now just drop okay so you got to go to drop.com to get it and i will put a link down below it's normal price for a long time was like 220 us dollars and then it would go on sale for 200 that normal msrp price has been creeping up over the last year or two currently i i filmed this video on august 28th 2023 and currently Drops website is listing the normal price is about 240 US dollars, but it is on sale at 200 USD. I think if memory serves correctly, I have seen the price, uh, the new price go as high as 260 US dollars. So that is why I say around 250 anymore. There are still some sales which drop it down to about $200. So that's the pricing bit out of the way. Now, it is essentially a Sennheiser HD 650. Massdrop came in, co uh, collaborated with Sennheiser, took the HD 650, made some aesthetic changes to it, changed the colorway, changed the padding on the headband a little bit, all of that. But uh, it is, for all practical purposes, an HD 650 restyled and rebranded and offered at a lower price. Okay, that means then that it is a 300 ohm headphone. The impedance in here is 300 ohms. And I don't remember the exact sensitivity rating, but it has a fairly high sensitivity. I think it is around 100 decibels per milliwatt, somewhere in there. But again, I'm going from memory here. But the point is, is it has is fairly high in sensitivity. So, uh, that leads to a couple of things like it has a reputation for being an excellent match to output transformerless tube amplifiers or otl tube amps and that is true i agree with that statement it matches to that sort of thing very well because of the high impedance uh, matching well to the high output impedance of those kinds of amplifiers all that so that's a little bit about what the hd6xx is now let's get to why I have chosen to kept, keep this headphone around really for several years now, and I still use it on occasion. Uh, it has just a, a very unique
unique and interesting sound that I like to hear every now and then. And it also is a very valuable reviewing tool. Here's why. It is one of the very best headphones that are, is available under 500 US dollars anymore. It is still in kind of an upper tier in terms of headphones um, available under a thousand US dollars anymore. Even at its 250-ish dollar price anymore, its value in terms of the performance that you get per dollar is still very high. Okay, unpacking that a little bit more, like why does all of that matter? Well, that excellent price to performance ratio means that it is a really good benchmark for other headphones that are around, say, 200 to 250 US dollars uh, and, and so forth. So any newcomer, any new model to the headphone market that it is, say, like $300 or less, one of the really important questions out there is going to be, is it worth it to pick up that headphone when this is sitting out there around 250 US dollars? So that is one reason why I keep it around. It is a benchmark that I know well and that, I mean, there have been over 100,000 of these units sold. It is a unit that the community knows well. And so that helps create a, like a really, I think, interesting and helpful reference point for my reviews. And then also being able for the audience to translate what I say in these reviews out about products in that price range. Okay, the 300 ohm impedance is another reason why I keep this around. It's a good match to tube amps. So when I get tube amps in that are, you know, usually under a thousand dollars and so forth, they either don't have an output transformer or the output transformer in it isn't spectacular and still performs uh, better than the amp still performs better when pushing a high impedance load. I have my KNHA1A Mark II over my shoulder here just by happenstance, really because it had a little bit of hiss going in it, so I put a new tube in it, and I'm burning in those tubes uh, to try to uh, see if that hiss is going away. I think it has, but more on that later, okay? Um, but that's an illustration of what I was just talking about. That is a transformer coupled tube amp, but it's under a thousand US dollars, and so the transformer isn't spectacular in it, so it still prefers the higher impedance loads um, and all that. I have a review for that out. I will link to that if you want to hear me unpack that a little bit more. Okay, but that's one reason why it's helpful to have this around is to see how tube amps under a thousand US dollars usually uh, do. Okay. Because these, again, these really light up with a tube amp. It's like almost a different headphone sometimes going from more entry-level solid-state um, amps to a tube amp. Now, the 300 ohm impedance also has an advantage. Like when I do get a solid-state kind of budget or, or budget enthusiast kind of level uh, headphone amp, just say a headphone amp that's, I don't know, $500 or less, okay, in that range. Like the question then becomes like, how well is it going to handle a 300 ohm load like this? Because this does present an interesting load and a challenging load to a lot of more budget oriented solid state amplifiers. Typically what happens is that those uh, cheaper solid state amps don't really have the power supply to handle the voltage swings that this thing needs and so that uh, shows up usually in terms of a bit of an anemic bass performance and not very well extended treble and that sort of thing in here so the 300 ohm impedance helps me evaluate how well those amplifiers do with that kind of a load right around in there now this headphone particularly through the mid-range is incredibly transparent and revealing it is known and rightfully so for it's just amazingly organic and natural mid-range timbre. It absolutely has that. Um, it has it in a way that very few headphones touch even when you're getting uh, up much higher in price. Like its mid-range timbre just competes way up with some much more expensive models out there, okay? But it's also very, very transparent through the mid-range. So if there is a problem with a signal chain there, again, more in the budget end through the mids, this will reveal that. So it becomes a really good reviewing tool uh, in that way as well. 
All right, but let's come back to that mid-range timbre there for a moment and just talk about uh, listening enjoyment because human voices sound really incredible on this for the price uh, and all that. Um, acoustic instruments like acoustic guitars, violins, uh, pianos, all that, you know, instruments that have a, you know, a, a really rich natural timbre through them, through the mids also just sound amazing on this. Okay, so in terms of listening, enjoyment and all that, like that's one reason to keep this around. Finally, I wanna to touch on here, like how well this headphone scales up. Okay, so around 250 US dollars. It's revealing and resolving enough that it gets better and better as you go up in quality of source gear. Okay, so if you go from a $200 DAC to a $700 DAC in the signal chain for this thing, it will reveal a lot of the differences between those two different DACs. And you will hear the improvement of that $700 DAC over the 200 pretty easily and uh, apparently. Like it's not difficult to hear that. Same is true with amplifiers. As amplifier quality goes up, and again, because of the 300 ohm load here, this becomes doubly true with amps, I think. As amplifier quality goes up, this just keeps revealing more and more and has more and more to give you. So it scales up with the quality of source gear really well, and unlike very few headphones anywhere near its price can do. Okay, so that is another reason that I keep it around. Like it is still a useful piece for reviewing thousand dollar amplifiers, okay? Now, yes, it does hit a ceiling, right? Is it going to keep scaling up like a, a Susvara does? Like, no, okay, it's not gonna go up that high. But it's not unreasonable to spend like $2,000, $2,500 on a signal chain amp DAC combo for this thing because it will make that investment worth your while. Okay, it scales up that well. All right, so um, hopefully that was a little shorter and more to the point than some of my videos are, but and hopefully that answers the question about why I keep the Mastrop plus Sennheiser HD 6XX headphone around. It just is a really flexible tool and a really well-known reference point, and it's also just really enjoyable to listen to with an absolutely stunning mid-range presentation in timbre. All right, I'm Wave Theory. Thanks for watching. Please like if you haven't yet. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Check out my PayPal and my Patreon, and generally do those things you do to support YouTube channels. And as always, enjoy the music.